lesson we're going to examine the effect of a minimum wage when it's imposed in a monopsonistic labor market. So we're going to go straight into the graph in this lesson. Let's have a look at our graph here which as you see is missing some labels. First let's add those labels. The downward sloping blue line represents the individual employer's demand and marginal revenue product of labor. It's downward sloping, of course, because at lower wage rates, the firm would be willing to hire more workers due to the fact that the revenue attributable to additional workers decreases thanks to diminishing marginal returns. All that theory was explained in earlier lessons. The green line in our graph represents the supply of labor. The upward sloping supply of labor shows that at higher wage rates, more households are willing to work in this market. The orange line in this graph you should recognize as the marginal resource cost curve. The wage making firm must raise wages to attract more workers. Therefore, the cost of hiring additional workers increases faster than the wage that the firm actually has to pay additional workers. Now, because the marginal resource cost is higher than the wage rate at any level of employment, the monopsonistic employer will choose to employ fewer workers than would be employed in perfect competition. In this graph, it's around 450. Whereas under a perfectly competitive labor market, the equilibrium level of employment is determined by the supply and demand for labor, which in this graph is right around 600 workers. Additionally, the wage rate determined in a competitive labor market is found by the intersection of supply and demand for labor. So the wage rate that would prevail in perfect competition, I'll, put, I'll call that wage rate perfect competition, equals $10. The monopsonist, on the other hand, does not have to pay workers $10. Since it's a wage maker, it can get away with paying a lower wage rate and hiring fewer workers. In this model, the wage rate under monopsony, I'll call that WRM, would equal $8, and only 400 workers would be employed. We can see in the graph that under monopsony, fewer workers will be employed than would be under perfect competition, 450 workers instead of 600, and the wage rate paid would be lower than it would be under perfect competition. So the next question is, what happens if the government imposes a minimum wage in this labor market, a price floor above $8 that makes it illegal for this monopsonistic employer to pay its workers only $8 per hour? Let's set a minimum wage at $10 and see how that would affect the equilibrium level of employment in this market. With a minimum wage of $10, the marginal resource cost of hiring up to 600 workers actually becomes $10. That's the first thing we need to point out here. So I'm going to draw my horizontal wage minimum. So this is going to be my minimum wage here. The black line represents the wage minimum of $10. How does this affect this monopsonistic employer's profit maximizing level of employment? Well, this actually becomes the marginal resource cost. This becomes the marginal resource cost. The firm can now hire anywhere between zero and 600 workers at exactly $10. Whereas before the imposition of the minimum wage, the firm had to raise the wage it paid additional workers to attract workers into this market. The firm's profit maximizing level of employment now equals 600 workers. So marginal resource cost equals marginal revenue product at 600 workers. The impact of the minimum wage is actually an increase in the level of employment. So counterintuitive. In a competitive labor market, a minimum wage reduces the level of employment. However, in a monopsonistic market, because the minimum wage becomes the firm's marginal resource cost up to the point where it crosses the supply curve, the firm has an incentive to hire more workers. It can do so without having to raise the wage of additional workers. So what happens to marginal resource costs now? What we end up with is this strange kinked marginal resource cost curve. What it becomes is this area that I am completely coloring black here. If the firm wishes to hire more than 600 workers, it must now raise the wage rate, causing its marginal resource cost to increase back to the original MRC curve. So look at the black line on this graph. That represents the new supply and marginal resource cost curve for the monopsonist following the imposition of a minimum wage above the original wage rate of $8 per hour. Ultimately, the deadweight loss that resulted from the monopsonistic labor market, that area that I would have shaded in yellow, is actually eliminated. So the deadweight loss is eliminated by the minimum wage. So is a minimum wage always going to increase employment in a monopsonistic labor market? If that's the case, then perhaps government should raise the minimum wage to $12 or $14 or 
let's just go ahead and illustrate the effect that an even higher minimum wage would have on this market. As we're going to see, an increase in the minimum wage does not always lead to an increase in employment. For example, a minimum wage set at $14 would shift the marginal resource cost out, and the firm could hire, in theory, up to 900 workers because that's how many workers would be willing to work for $14. But would the firm wish to hire 900 workers? Absolutely not. Because in this situation, employment is actually going to decrease because at $14, the quantity demanded of labor would only be 400. So it is possible, of course, that a minimum wage that is set too high could actually reduce employment even in a monopsonistic labor market. Because as we see here, MRC equals MRP at 400 workers in that case. So let's go over to our notes and do some analysis of the impact of a minimum wage in a monopsonistic labor market. So as we showed in our analysis here, a minimum wage can actually increase the level of employment in a monopsonistic labor market. The reason is the wage minimum, the minimum wage, replaces the MRC curve at lower levels of employment. The firm is no longer a wage maker and can hire additional workers without raising wages. In a way, the monopsonist is incentivized to hire more workers following the imposition of the minimum wage because the cost of hiring additional workers does not increase faster than the wage rate it has to pay them anymore. Now that's only true up to the point where the minimum wage crosses the supply of labor curve. At that point, the MRC increases back to the original level since the firm now has to raise the wages it offers workers to attract more workers. So how about a conclusion here? We learned in our earlier lesson that minimum wages reduce the level of employment in competitive labor markets. However, we learn in this lesson that in monopsonistic markets, of course that refers to markets in which a single employer employs all the workers, a minimum wage can actually increase the level of employment and increase the level of total welfare and efficiency in the labor market. So in order to evaluate whether minimum wages overall are desirable or not, we have to consider the type of market in which the minimum wage is being imposed. If there is a single dominant employer, this might be in markets such as retail in small towns where Walmart or some other mega store employs all retail workers or any other situation in which a dominant employer employs almost all the workers in a particular market. Minimum wages can improve efficiency, increase employment, and improve the level of overall welfare in society. However, if there are dozens or hundreds of employers competing with each other, a minimum wage will reduce the overall level of employment and could create a disequilibrium in which more workers are seeking jobs than there are jobs available. So minimum wages, good in monopsonistic labor markets, not so desirable perhaps in competitive labor markets. Here we go. One step at a time, no.